Welcome to IT Handy Guide Tutorial. My name is Kevin. In this tutorial, we are going to configure the PHP. So over here, what we have done is we have installed uh, Virtual C++ uh, 64 bit and 32 uh, 32 bit. We also installed SAMP. So what we are going to do is to configure our Apache. Okay. Um, if you install Apache. Uh, directly, then here is the location of your Apache configuration file. So, which we are under Apache folder. If you install uh, Apache file SAMP, and then your Apache will inside of the SAMP folder. In this case, this is the location of the Apache configuration file. Uh, again, if you install PHP uh, directly, then your PHP folder will under C drive directly. If you install PHP under uh, file SAMP, in this case, PHP folder will under SAMP folder. And here, this is the location of the PHP configuration file. And this is the um, index homepage, the homepage in document root. Okay. So if you install a patch directly, then your document root will under a patch. However, if you install um, if you install a patch file your uh, if you install a patch file the same and then your uh, document root will inside uh, will inside the same folder. Okay? Alright. So let's talk about the Apache configuration file first. So if I go to this one so that is inside of the same C drive, uh, same, and then uh, going to Apache, C O N F, and then this is our uh, con configuration file HTTPD C O N F. Open with the Notepad, and then. Um, this one is our bin folder. Okay, in the bin folder we have a httpd exe. So if you go to command line, if you open the command line, you can go to this folder and type this one dash t. So it will tell you the syntax. Okay, what does that mean? That means our PH, uh, our Apache configuration file is okay. The syntax of our uh, configuration file is okay. Uh, if you have anything wrong, like like I previously show you server name, uh, if you command this line and then restart the Apache. Every time when you change anything in a Apache configuration file, you have to restart Apache service. Okay, so in my case, I restart Apache, and then if I go to type this again, it will tell me my server then have some problem. So if I delete this and restart Apache service. What will happen is it will tell me the syntax okay again. All right, so this command will will tell tell me is there any error message from this configuration file. If there's not if there's nothing wrong, then it will tell me the syntax okay. All right, so firstly, uh, one point one is actually for the person who want to install a patch directly. But we installed a patch file. Uh, okay, one more thing. If you install a patch directly, uh, at the end of the configuration file, you need to add this line. You need to add this line. Like this. However, because we installed a patch file the same, so we don't need this line. 
we don't need this line. This line will tell uh, the patch where is the PHP. Okay, so this is only for the person who installed uh, a patch directory. Now, uh, install if if you installed a patch file the same, you don't need this line at all. Okay, so that's going to 1.2. 1.2 is for uh, the person who installed a patch uh, file same. So this one. Okay. So in this case, you can try to search the keyword PHP. You can try to search the keyword PHP. So this is the only place you can find the PHP. So you will not see uh, those line that I that we just discussed previously. In addition, you don't need to add any code that we discussed previously. Okay. So what code? We actually add like four or five line. I can't remember to the end of this file. But if you install a patch file SAMP, you don't need to do that. Okay, bundle like SAMP or MEMP is good for the beginner who try to learn PHP or MySQL from zero background, okay? In real world, we always install everything individually. Thus, you don't really have to know why you don't need to add PHP configuration that we discussed previously, okay? We can't find the PHP configuration in the Apache, uh, in, in the Apache configuration file, but that is fine because this is a bundle tool, so we don't need to know. Because in the real world, we don't actually use the bundle tool, and there's there's a lot of reason why we don't really use the bundle tool because you might have the SQL, uh, you might have a SQL Server in computer A, and you might have a PHP in a computer B. They might be a different location. In this case. We normally just install uh, everything individually. Okay. Document documentary index. Documentary index is this one. This is a documentary index. Documentary index is a list of file name. So this is uh, the list of file name. Okay, the list of file name. And if the file in a document root, where is the document root? I will tell the, tell you where is the document root later. Okay, if this file in the document root match one of the file in here. Okay, if the file in the document root match the file name in here, uh, match the file name in here, then that file will load as a home page. Like in the document root, if there's a file is called index.php, then this one will be a will be a home page. Okay, uh, so if there's a file is called index.pl, then index.pl will become a home page. So here is a list of a file name, and that tell you which one should be a home page. Okay, but there's a preference. Like this one is the first preference. This second one is the second preference. Like this. This mark is because uh, if you don't if you don't have this mark, you have to um, make everything in the same line. Like this. So everything in the same line, everything is in a 2A6 line. But because I want to uh, make that more tidy, so I want to move this one to the next line. That's the reason I use this symbol. Okay, I use a slash symbol. Okay, next one. Document root. What is the document root? So this is the location of the document root. So what is the document root? Here is the path of your document root. Document root is the path that the server will load the file to server, will load the file to the server. That means all of your PHP file will have to locate in this folder, okay? You have to put all of your PHP file into this folder. And server root. Document root and server root are slightly different. Server root, in this case, that will be SAMP Apache. Okay, what does that mean? Server root is the path that contains the file of error, log, and centra for the server. Okay, so this server root tell uh, this server root tell uh, tell your web server where is the Apache. Okay, where is the Apache? Okay. 
Every time when you change the when you change anything in a configuration file, you have to restart a patch service. Just like this. Okay, next one is the PHP configuration file. So where is the PHP configuration file, which is in here, under the SAMP, C drive, SAMP, and then PHP. And there's a, a few files called PHP INI. This is your PHP configuration file. Okay, that's going to the 2.2. 2.2 is if you install PHP file SAMP, and then you will see the three file. This is the PHP INI, this PHP INI dash development, and this one is dash production. Production is actually for the production environment. Development is actually for the development, like your local computer. Production is like the file in your hosting. Okay. And PHP INI is actually, okay, these two is just a, like a blueprint or template. We, uh, the PHP will not use these two. The PHP will search where is the PHP INI, and this one is the configuration file for this machine. Okay, so in this case, uh, we open the PHP INI. So this is our PHP INI, the PHP configuration file. 3.1 uh, index.php. Okay, so if you go to here, we have a uh, under the same, we have a HT document. All of your, uh, all of your index file, in index.php file, have to put into the uh, document root location. So this location is document root location. Okay. So in this case, if you go to uh, Chrome, if you go to Chrome, and type localhost. What will happen is. It will redirect you to the dash and the index.html. I think that is called index.html. It will redirect you to here. Okay. Why is that? It's because in our document root, we have an index.php. It actually redirect you to the dashboard. Okay. When you redirect to the dashboard, folder, it will say, oh, here is a uh, index.html. So this one will become the home page inside of this folder. Okay. So in this case, if you want to change this one to the other things, can you do that? Yes, you can. So basically what you can do is to uh, change this one to the other name It's like old. And in this case, you can create another file is called um, index.php. Okay, so let me open that one. And then I copy this. Oop. What will happen is if I go to localhost, it will automatically to load the PHP uh, index.php file. So what is index.php? What is index.php file? It tell me echo hello world. So here's the hello world. And with this one, here will show me all the information. Here will show me all the information regarding uh, regarding the PHP information. So this is Hello World and PHP information. So basically, it actually load this file. Okay. All right. So all of your web page should put into the document root in this folder. So let me change this back. Delete this. Change this back. In this case, when you go to the local host again, it will redirect you to the dashboard again to this file. Okay. All right. So basically, this is the uh, document root. Next one is the Apache configuration file and PHP configuration file. Okay, let me close this one. Um, let me go to the 
1.2 over here okay if you install uh, if you install PHP file same then here is your PHP configuration file which I already opened just let me show you where it is again so you need to go to SAMP PHP and here is the PHP ILI this one so this is our configuration file for SAMP right, under the SAMP all right in order to connect to MySQL database or in order to install PHP MyAdmin you have to enable the following extension okay you have to uh, enable the following extension and in this case if you're using SAMP then there are a lot of extension has already been enabled you just need to enable the following extensions which is these two okay so let me show you where it is you just search control F MySQL you will be able to find out all the extension so here are all the extension we have okay here are all the extension we have all right so it already uh, enabled if you are using SAMP it already enabled a lot of extension except you have to enable GD and open SSL and that's all okay that's all just uh, this one and this one okay let me explain what is this extension for the first one is B, uh, BZ2 BZ2 uh, extension means using the open source compression software it's like a 7 zip but BZ2 is typically used in Unix or Linux system we enable this because we might use the Linux server or Unix server okay next one is the CURL CURL extension is necessary for PHP MyAdmin it allow us to receive and send information file URL syntax okay look at this receive and send information file URL okay it looks like it's a it's actually it's a API concept in the API we have a get we have post we have um, I think we have a get post put and delete yeah it's depending on the URL or and uh, your information information we normally send by xml or json uh, but we don't use xml anymore so we normally send by json but you don't have to worry about this anymore you just need to ensure you enable curl okay next one is file info file info over here okay this extension is helpful uh, to read file information like content type etc okay and GD, I guess GD is gravity design or gravity something something. Okay, so this extension is used for image creation and uh, manipulation. Extension get hex. This extension can look up message in the uh, in current domain. All right. So in here we can send and receive the message. Here we can look up what is the message. All right. When you enable get text you normally enable file info and the CURL as well this is just what we normally do so we just enable all of this next one is MB string this one MB string extension is related to, uh, to uh, it is is to read multi byte characters such as Chinese characters so we know uh, English character actually just uh, occupy one uh, one character space and Chinese character normally is uh, occupied two character space in this case you need to enable MB string so under the uh, MB string you can have a multi-language website so when you enable MB string extension you also should enable EXIF here must be after MB string as blah 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 so we normally enable these two directly okay this one is for the Chinese character. It's like multi-language. And this one is because you already enable this one, so you should enable this one as well. I don't really know what is EXIF, but I just uh, enable these two straight away. Next one is OpenSSL, this one. 
This extension is for encryption. So when you send the information, when you send the information file the URL, they should encrypt as well. So in this case, we need to use the open SSL. Okay, so this one is for MySQL. This one is also for MySQL. This one is for MySQL Lite. It's like a different version. And when you install MySQL or MariaDB, you actually install Lite version as well. So you just need to enable this one, this one, and this one. That's all. Okay, so here are all the extension we have just uh, enabled in the PHP INI. So once you do that, you have to restart your Apache and restart your MySQL. So in this case, I need to restart Apache and then restart MySQL, which is over here. Okay, so I just restart Apache and MySQL. Okay, that's all. I hope you enjoy my tutorial. Have a good day.